How safe exactly are we on our planet? We're told that it has an atmosphere with an ionosphere and a magnetosphere that offer us protection from various kinds of cosmic threats. But how well do they fare against the sun's tantrums? So, the sun isn't always calm and peaceful like it might look during a romantic sunset. Periodically, it goes through the process of magnetic field reversal, when it starts all acting up. You can call it paramagnetic syndrome, or PMS for short. A couple of things start happening when the sun goes through its cycles. The number of sunspots increases, solar flares take place more often, and worst of all, coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. Don't worry if you have no clue what these are. Neither do I. Joking. Not. Alright, let's uh, sort it out. The sun is a gigantic ball of hot plasma that moves along a fairly chaotic magnetic field. Its magnetic field twists and tangles, creating loops that build up enormous amounts of energy. Sometimes these loops snap and produce intense bursts of electromagnetic radiation called solar flares. That radiation is very dangerous, but it doesn't really get past our atmosphere. The sun's convection is weakened in the regions where solar flares originate, making them cooler and dimmer, which is something we observe as sunspots. Our biggest problem is high amounts of charged particles ejected towards us as a consequence, which are called coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. That ejecta sometimes reaches Earth, where it meets our magnetosphere, which kind of walks it to the poles, where we can see it as mesmerizing glow in the sky, aka aurora. However, a strong enough CME might significantly disturb Earth's magnetic field, starting a geomagnetic storm. We know this can happen, because it has happened before. The Carrington event can be called the father of all geomagnetic storms, at least out of those we know. It started with a powerful solar flare on September 1, 1859 and was well documented by two British astronomers, Richard Hutchson and Richard Carrington. That storm was so strong people could see auroras in daylight, telegraphs gave electric shocks to their operators and even caught fire. Sure enough, that geomagnetic storm is considered to be the result of a big CME colliding with Earth's magnetosphere. I think you already get it, geomagnetic storms can be pretty scary, and if you think there must be a way to predict them, you're kind of right. As you might already suspect, sunspots and solar flares are not totally random. They correlate with the reversal of the sun's magnetic field, when its north becomes south and south becomes north. At the beginning of the cycle, the sun is happy, its magnetic field is well defined and there are little to no sunspots or solar flares. This part of the cycle is called solar minimum, which refers to the sun having minimal activity. Around the middle of the cycle, the sun's magnetic field adopts a less defined structure and the appearance of sunspots and solar flares becomes more frequent. This is the phase of highest solar activity called solar maximum. Past this point the sun calms down, the magnetic field settles with a reverse polarity and the cycle ends with a new solar minimum. The sun's cycles have an average duration of around 11 years and they have been quite well documented since the 18th century, which puts us in cycle 25. The Carrington event sounds scary, with telegraphs on fire and sparking cables, but we live in the year 2024. We have never had as many electronics as we have today. Gadgets, computers, satellites, transportation, medical equipment, the list is endless really, and all of these could be significantly damaged by a strong enough geomagnetic storm. But it could get even worse than that. Scientists agree that even stars as calm as our sun can produce super flares every few thousand years. If we're not ready for a geomagnetic storm that could follow such flares, the consequences might be catastrophic. Traffic. Navigation, communications and power grids will be completely obliterated. Our civilization will be sent back to the Iron Age for decades, with a bonus package of famine, financial loss and complete chaos. Luckily, scientists keep an eye on the sun, and CMEs take about a day to reach Earth after a solar flare is observed. It's similar to how we hear a thunder only after we see a lightning. Should you worry? No. You see, engineers design modern tech with these risks in mind. They have all kinds of safety solutions, like electromagnetic shielding, surge protection, grounding. Some things can be protected by just being turned off for the duration of a geomagnetic storm, which is why it's important to know when one is coming. By the way, take a moment to go and punch that like and subscribe button. I'll wait. As you can see, the study of solar activity is quite important. Studying anything about the cosmos is important, to be honest. Our planet is like an oasis in an otherwise hostile environment, where all sorts of things can instantly kill us. Better not miss any bad signs. Bye-bye.